Super BitCon 2017 was an interesting experience, to say the least. My wife and son and his friend and I headed up to Oklahoma City on Saturday morning, saw on Facebook on our way out there had been a severe storm at the state fairgrounds at about 5.30. They had no power, trees were down. We thought it looked kind of bad, but not that big of a deal, and they said, we plan to start an hour late at 11 o'clock. We get stuck in a traffic jam for about two hours just trying to get to the state fairground. We continually are getting diverted around the state fairgrounds and eventually realize we're not gonna be able to get anywhere close. And my wife checked Facebook and found out that they had to cancel the Saturday events and we're hoping that it would be open again on Sunday, as planned. So, we went and had some lunch, did some game shopping at normal shops that we visit when we're up there, and headed to the after party, after party, which was actually before any Super VidCon events had actually occurred this year. Had a great time there. They gave free wristbands to everyone in attendance that would get them admission on Sunday morning should they be able to open. We stayed for the game show. Uh, we got an hour of free playtime on all the arcade machines at the location, which was the main event in Edmond. Really cool place. So we went and stayed at the hotel and hoped for the best. Got up in the morning and the times that were planned for Super BitCon to be open on Sunday was 11 to five. But because Saturday had been canceled, they went from nine to seven, which was great because I was really feeling for those vendors. I mean, if you're a small vendor going to an event like this and you've gone to the expense of getting there and getting all of your stuff there, and then you don't get to sell anything, that could put an end to your whole career at that point. So we went, I spent a fair amount of money, but I'd been planning for it. Came home with around 40 games and my wife bought some items and we just had a great time. So let me show you some of the stuff I got. One thing I wanna show you is this sweet painting that we got. There is a woman, I will put her name on the bottom of the screen who takes thrift store finds of paintings that people have made and applies pixel art to the front of them to turn them into video game scenes. And my wife loved this one uh, from Earthbound, so we picked it up. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so here's my haul. Some things are great. Some of these things I bought specifically because they were terrible. Most of it I bought for pretty cheap, but there are a few things that I splurge a little bit on. I still paid a fair price and bargained a little bit, but I don't know, I can't bring myself to buy things to collect for more than what they originally cost. If I didn't buy something when it was cheap, then I just don't have it in my collection. All right, so let me go through these things. Blast Core uh, is a game that I know it was one of the first Nintendo 64 games. I always heard it was great, and a lot of people said it gets repetitive eventually but that it was great in the beginning, and I always wanted to try it out. This was pretty cheap. It also used to belong to Cade Peck. Somebody paid 20 bucks for it, but I paid seven. Not in the best shape, but I really just wanted to try it out. Here's one that I don't know why I didn't get when I was a kid, because I loved Kid Icarus on the NES, and this version of it, I tried it last night. It's really pretty cool. Very similar gameplay to the NES Kid Icarus. But like a lot of Game Boy games, uh, the screen has to scroll uh, in more directions and you can't see as much on the screen at once as you can on the NES. But still, I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Another one that I, for some reason, was uninterested in as a kid, but have really been wanting to play since then. I think what happened was, the Game Boy was not the only system I had. And the first few Game Boy games that came out weren't so special. and pretty much ignored handheld games for quite a while. But anyway, I'm looking forward to playing this. The original Final Fantasy for PSP. My son wanted this. This is one of the best versions of the game. And uh, so we picked that up for him. This is the only Super Famicom game I got, SD Gundam Gaiden 2. Uh, I got SD Gundam Gaiden on the Famicom last year. And it's a pretty interesting little JRPG with super deformed Gundam characters. Another game that my son wanted, he is a Myst fanatic, he loves all the different versions and uh, he didn't have the PlayStation version of this, so uh, we picked that up for him. Of course it didn't cost much, plus it's not in the best shape. 
but he just likes to compare different versions, which is something I like to do as well. This was a great find for me. I've been looking for this one for a while. I have the N, A, C, and O of the Namco Museum collection, and I bought the M off eBay, and it was the Greatest Hits version, which doesn't have the letter on it. It has a collage of photos of the games in it, and I wanted to be able to set all these on a shelf side by side and have it say Namco, so now I've got the full set. World Court Tennis. This is one I've heard about and been looking forward to play. This is, well, there's nothing on the back of these things because it's supposed to come in a box, but this is a strange tennis match RPG for the Turbo Graphics. You walk around getting in different tennis matches with people in the environment, and I don't know, I guess leveling up your skills. I will probably make a video of this whenever I play it. I also really like here <laughs> That this says it is from Maple Leaf Video and Dairy Bar. I don't know, I might try to figure out where that is, but... Oh, it says Lanark and Carlton Place. Maybe I'll put a notation on the screen when I find out where that is, as if anyone cares. I bought this and it was a bit of an accident. While I was there, I could not remember whether or not it was the Metal Gear Legacy collection I wanted or the HD collection. I convinced myself it was this one I got home and realized I was wrong. I should have just hit Amazon while it was there. This one, I mean, these are great games. I almost said they're solid games, <laughs> which they are. But the Legacy Collection also has Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 that never came out here in the US on it. So, I don't know, I'll probably trade this in somewhere and get what I was actually looking for at some point. Time Crisis Raising Storm. I'm always interested in anything else that lets me use my move controllers uh, but what really caught my eye with this one is you know I was talking about the after party that was at main event uh, my wife and I played this dead storm pirates game and it was pretty ridiculous uh, together and it's included on this disc as well as the arcade version of time crisis 4 so that's a pretty good value I paid 15 bucks for this surprisingly I had to look a long time to find this Axelay was one of the early Super Nintendo games that really showed off the capabilities of the system. Mode 7 and graphics and particularly music. I really wanted to have this in my collection. I never have owned it. A lot of my Super Nintendo games I foolishly got rid of in the mid 90s and early 90s uh, when I bought a Super Famicom floppy disk copier for my Super Nintendo. Copied a bunch of my games to floppy disks and then sold the cartridges at a pawn shop. Uh, one of my bigger collecting regrets, obviously. Speaking of games I shouldn't have gotten rid of, my wife claims that this was hers and I got rid of it years ago. We weren't married at the time. Uh, I could be wrong. I didn't think it was hers, but we did have a lot of fun playing it. It has two-player co-op, although not all the time because you don't always have two characters. You've got to play certain ways into the game before second character is available. Pretty fun. As far as the mana games go, this is actually one of the best. Get ready to be jealous. That's right. Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. Paid 10 bucks for this. Probably a little high. It's a ridiculous game, but I rented it years ago and thought it was pretty hilarious. You're Michael Jordan rescuing children with flaming basketballs and freezing basketballs, and I think there's a few other kinds as well. Sort of like Michael Jackson Moonwalker but with Michael Jordan and a lot less dancing. This is the only repro I got this year, but it's pretty amazing. Good weight to this cartridge. This company, I'll put their name on the bottom of the screen here. They have custom circuit boards printed. You can see the battery inside the cartridge there. These East games, East 3 got a US release, but East 4 and East 5 did not get a US release on the Super Nintendo. I love East 4 on the PC Engine Duo, but it's actually an entirely different game from what I understand. So I was glad to get this repro. It's uh, really well made, and uh, I really wanted to support the kind of things that uh, that company was doing. Pick this up for my wife for seven bucks. Itsudemo Nyan To Wonderful. I think it's supposed to be a pun because it says Nyan To Wan, which is meow and bark in uh, Japanese. So. It looks kind of like a uh, Super Game Boy precursor to uh, Nintendogs, but 
I'm sure it's really boring, more of a cool thing to put on the shelf than anything else. My wife was also a big fan of card capture Sakura back in the 90s, so I found this little thing. It almost looks like some kind of cooking mama. Really not sure there. It looks like pancakes in the corner. I bet you it's just text heavy and we can't even play it. Still, another cool box. I thought I'd pick up a Sega Master System game while I was there. Uh, I recently got the Sega Master System adapter for the Retron. Although I have a Master System, it's difficult to hook it up to a TV with anything but the RF switch. And I seem to have misplaced the very specific power supply for my Master System. So, anyway, Aztec Adventure. Uh, it looked goofy enough, so I picked it up. Another terrible game that I have fond memories of. Mick and Mac as the Global Gladiators, a uh, McDonald's licensed game made by Virgin for some weird reason. I'd forgotten just how frustrating and hard it is. Although it has pretty impressive animation and graphics, it's brutally difficult for a game that seems like it would have to be geared towards children. Paid three bucks for it. I paid two bucks for this and I have no idea what it is. Kokoto Fishing Master? Uh, you're that weird ugly guy and you fish or something. Never even heard of this. It looks cool in an awful way, or awful in a cool way, I guess. Here's one that my wife wanted. Uh, I guess that's La Pucelle Tactics. Uh, PlayStation 2 turn-based strategy. And the guy who was selling it, he was selling his personal collection. Uh, so he threw in the strategy guide that went with it, so we don't generally use strategy guides in this house, but it's got good art in it and he gave it away, so we took it. Another one that my son wanted, Dot Hack Part 3 Outbreak. He didn't want to play any of the series until he got all four parts. I already had one and two, and I gave up after that. Uh, now we see that Part 4 is very expensive, so I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. But this is an interesting series, if you don't know, from the PS2 era. It's a fake, massively multiplayer role-playing game, and uh, basically you are playing the role-playing game and trying to find out the problem. I think your character's in a coma, and there's a little anime that comes along with it that uh, shows some of the things happening in the real world. Hey, I guess whose this is? Yeah, this is my son's. Part of his missed collection. I have quite a few Saturn games, but this was one I did not have. Yeah, I know. I heard it was terrible, like everybody else, controls are ridiculous, but I got a good price on this and it, it's complete. It has the uh, Star Fox Guard with it that apparently is a tower defense game and I've wanted to try it and the price was right now so I picked it up. Okay, now we've gotten down to my NES pickups. This is one I used to own and got rid of and wanted to show my son, a boy and his blob. You feed jelly beans to a blob from outer space and he changes into different things. It's strange and very difficult and actually really short if you know what you're doing. Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout. Bugs Bunny's fan club is throwing him a 50th birthday party and all of the other Looney Tunes characters are jealous so you have to brutally murder them on your way to your birthday party. Mighty Bomb Jack is one that I bought as a kid and immediately regretted. But now as an adult, I understand the game and it's actually pretty fun. But it was frustrating and not what I expected. I don't know what I was expecting as a kid. It's hard to describe. It's an early platformer. Karnov was one I loved at the arcade. I know the NES version is not as good, but it was still pretty interesting. Strange platformer where you collect items and have to figure out the right place to use the items. Jackal, really nothing special, but it's a decent shmup. Uh, light Gun Game. I thought I had all the Light Gun Games. I didn't have this one somehow, so I picked it up. Kickle Cubicle is one that I had already, and it's a great game if you haven't played it. Uh, but the one that I had, the spine label was just ripped off, and it's always bugged me. So I'm going to take that one uh, into a used game shop for credit and keep this one in the collection. Dragon Warrior 3. I never owned it, never played it, but I spent 50 bucks on this and I don't regret it. It's in perfect shape. It's not complete, but I don't really collect my games complete. I collect my NES games so I can put them on the shelf like this, like books. Only have boxes to a few select games that I have up on the shelf on display. So looking forward to playing this. 
Hey, what do you know? MC Kids by Virgin came out pretty much the same time as Mick and Mac as Global Gladiators. This one is a little Super Mario Brothers like and I just think it's such a weird oddity and they're really not terrible. They're not great, but there are a lot worse games for the NES. Archon. This was a game that I loved on the Commodore 64 and it's sort of like chess and when you encounter another piece then it just turns into an arena and you control the character and have a battle. I haven't played it in a very long time but I'm looking forward to playing the NES version of it which I've never played. Here's Popeye. This I always thought was an interesting move for Nintendo that they made a Popeye arcade game and it runs on the same hardware as Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and Donkey Kong 3. And this one belonged to Jesse, who the spelling makes me think that it might be a girl, so alright Jesse, I've got your cartridge, but it doesn't belong to you anymore. Astyanax, not a very good game. I remember renting it with a friend of mine. We played all the way through it in one night. I mean, it was okay, but I just thought, I had memories of playing it uh, in junior high, so I thought I would just put it in the collection because it cost almost nothing. Spelunker needs a little cleanup. This is a really difficult uh, little game. I recall that the character would die if he fell basically half his height. So you have to do everything in the stage exactly right to continue. Double Dragon 3, pretty cool. Not really much else to say about it. It's the third Double Dragon game. And then I got two PS4 games. Killzone Shadowfall, nothing special about that except that it was four dollars and I had never played it. That's been my history with all of the Killzone games. I don't really care about them but when they get cheap enough I play through them. Song of the Deep, uh, I really don't know a lot about except that I heard it's kind of a under the sea artsy metroidvania where you are in a submarine the whole time. I got this for nine dollars which for a physical copy that's a good rate. Then we got these two $30 mystery boxes, which to me, uh, just the question mark box is pretty cool anyway, and it's fun when we're there to just open up and see what kind of junk we get. Nothing particularly special this time. I can't even really remember what it is, but, well, this was cool. A Terraria slime. Toxic sludge. Excuse me, I don't play a whole lot of Terraria. Uh, Long Duck Dong uh, from 16 Candles. Pop figure, amazing, I suppose. This Pokemon, I don't know my Pokemon very well. Uh, exclusively for Nerd Block, these are clearly leftovers that people have bought in bulk from subscription boxes. Street Fighter patch, a shirt. Yeah, that's not a bad Street Fighter shirt. Made by Shirt Punch for Nerd Block. Yeah, I like Street Fighter well enough. I might wear it. And that box did also have a little uh, Mega Man style Ryu keychain where you push the button and he lit up and he made Ryu's Haroken sound, but we gave that to Sid's friend Michael. In this box, we have a Daredevil shirt. Not really a Daredevil fan, but maybe I can find one to give it to. A pig from Gravity Falls. I really don't know anything about Gravity Falls. A Zombie Finger Wine Stopper. Bleach Trading Card Game Set. A Jack Skellington Pop Figure Keychain. That's pretty cool, actually. A Dorbs Rocket Raccoon. And last and strangest, Domo-kun Dressed Like a Ghostbuster. And I would assume that he's dressed like Ray because he's wearing those goggles, but it says Domo on his shirt. So he's just dressed like Domo and he likes race goggles. So there you go, that's everything I got this year. Last year, nearly everything I got was a Famicom game. This year, I barely saw any Famicom games. You never know what's gonna be there, but it's always a fun time and looking forward to going next year. Thanks for watching.